In this video, Trey, we're going to look at what are range bars. Stay tuned. Hey guys, warm welcome to you. Thank you for tuning in. All right, so what are range bars? It's basically a different way of displaying price on our chart. Most of us will use a time-based candlestick or a bar. Now, I want to talk about bars uh, in here. I also talk about candlesticks as well. Uh, it's just a different way of visualizing stuff as we know. If you're unfamiliar with the difference between bars and candlesticks, then go and check out a video I've done exclusively on that. So what are range bars? So if we look at normal charts, we normally would have them split up into time, right? So if you had a daily chart, each candlestick would represent one day. If you had a 15 minute chart, each candlestick would re uh, represent 15 minutes of trade. So how does it normally work? Let's assume we're gonna use a 15 minute candlestick chart as an example here. When the start of the hour goes, so let's say it's one o'clock, bang, then that's the start of the candle. So the open of the candle is at a specific point in time. So if we were looking, say, at this candle here, and let's kind of zoom in on that one a little bit, make it bigger so we can see what's going on. Uh, the open, this is a red candle here. I have got my red pen, but it was assume that's red. Uh, the open is always going to be at the high of here. So that's going to be our one o'clock. OK, and we're going to have a higher low. We don't know when the higher low occurs within that 15 minutes. So this high and low could occur at any point in time. But the close of the candlestick, i.e. the body that in the red an example of a red candlestick is going to be the lower end is going to be 15 minutes later. That denotes a 15 minute candle. It happens to be a green candle. It'll be the other way around. But you get the idea. The body is set by the distance it moves during that time period. But when we compare that to a range chart, we look at this one here. A range chart is different. It basically remo removes all time from the equation. Now you still have time on your x-axis, you still have price on your y-axis, but each candlestick or each bar is formed using a range as opposed to a time. So in this instance, each candle is 15 minutes or an hour or whatever we've got it set to. In this instance, it's each, each candle or each bar is set to a range. So example, we could say 10 pips, 100 pips, 50 ticks, 50 cents, whatever unit we're trading in, that's what we'd set it to. So if we we're trading a currency pair, for example, and we're day trading, perhaps we want to set it to 10 pips. Now that means that the high and low is always going to be 10 pips range. That's how it's formed. And so what happens is this, a new bar will start and it won't end until the range in that time period, whatever the time period may be, is over 10 pips. So 10 pips, it will print the candle. The next candle only prints when you've had 10 pips move. Now, the interesting thing about that, why it removes time, is that that could take an hour, that could take a second. So you eliminate time from things immediately and you start to just put in the range of the instrument. So if you can imagine at the open, we move 20, 30, 40 pips, you're gonna get 40 pip move, you're gonna get four candles printing all in the same direction. Then it starts to quiet down at lunchtime, and let's say it sits in a six point range, six pip range for an hour, then that candlestick is not gonna finish printing, I'm not gonna close that candlestick until it finally reaches 10 pips. So you're eliminating a lot of the time and that could be advantageous to you. So what happens is once we've got the 10 pips, the next candlestick or the next bar opens outside of the last bar. So you're always going to get a move outside and that's gonna be always one pip extra. So once you've got that 10 pip range, the next one's gonna open one pip above or below the high or low of the last bar. The range bar also, by the very nature, you can probably work this out now yourselves, guys, is that because the range in this example is 10 pips, it's always going to close at the high or low. And you can see why, because it won't close, the bar is not on a timestamp, it's when it gets to 10 pips. So it's going to either be down 10 pips or it's going to be up 10 pips. Now, it's not to say you can't have a wick or a tail, you can do it, I've not kind of drawn uh, many on here, but you couldn't quite easily have a wick or a tail, but you're only going to have it on one side or the other. You're going to have either a wick or a tail or an upside or the downside because you might get that intra, intra bar move but ultimately as long as it still goes as soon as it goes to the 10 pip range bang it's going to close that candlestick and start the next one on the 11th pip so you're going to the range bar is going to close at the high or the low so the removing time can remove noise. It can kind of make things clearer for you. What I'll do now is I'll stick up a couple of charts on each side and cover me up with exactly the same instrument. But what we'll do is use a 10 pip 
uh, range bar on one and we use a time on the other and you can see the difference in the two. Now, if you like more stuff on range bars, guys, give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, chuck some stuff in the comment section below. We can go into perhaps some strategies, some methods, some ways of using these, some pros and cons and how you can maybe complement your existing training with time-based bars. Uh, yeah, like I say, stick in the comment section below, stick your ideas and give it a thumbs up if you like this kind of stuff. And also let me know if you use range bars, if you use them and uh, how you use them and kind of the strategies that you guys employ. Always interested to hear what you're up to. Take care, whatever you're doing, keep the risk managed.